Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make some very realistic fire in Blender. The fire will have smoke emitting from it, as well as some embers that will come off of it and fly away, which will look really nice. Depending on which render type you use in Blender, so either Cycles or Eevee, I will show you how to make the fire look good and realistic in both. And so without further ado, let's jump into it. So first, we are going to look flat on the x-axis and size the original cube up on Z a bit. We're then going to come down to the physics properties and change the physics to fluid or turn on fluid. I'm then going to change the fluid type to domain and then I'm going to change the resolution divisions to 64. The reason why we need a domain is so that it kind of acts as a barrier for the fire and the smoke because even no matter how powerful your computer is, it's not going to be able to render an infinite sky of smoke. And so it needs a spot to cut it off at. I'm then going to come down here and turn on noise as well as dissolve. I'm going to change the time of the dissolve to 13. This will make it so that the smoke dissolves a bit quicker and as well as the file, but it also gives the file a nice point at the top. I'm then going to come down to cache and change the cache type to all. And now we can make the actual file E middle. So we're going to hit shift A and bring in a UV sphere. Size that down a bit and pull it to the bottom of our domain here. I'm then going to add the same fluid physic. And then I'm going to change the fluid type now to flow instead though. I'm then going to change the flow type instead of just smoke to file and smoke. And then I'm going to change the flow, flow behavior to inflow. I'm also then going to change the fuel to 0.75 so that it's a little bit less crazy but you can always make this whatever you want so maybe you want it like to be a lot and now if we go back to our domain and we select it come down here to cache and we can hit bake all. So as you can see, if we now go through the timeline, we can see that we have this really nice file as well as some really nice smoke. The only problem is though, is that when we go into rendered mode or the rendered viewport shading, there is no file. That's because our domain doesn't have any material that actually creates the file smoke. And so we'll need to make one. So we're going to come down to the bottom left here and change the timeline to sh the shader editor. I'm then going to zoom in here select the principal bscf and delete it i'll then hit shift a and i'm gonna change it to a principled volume i'll then select the volume here and put it into the material output volume i'm then going to change the color to completely black change the color attribute to temperature so type in temperature here i'm then going to change the anisotropy to four the black body intensity to 4, the density to 4, and then the temperature to 1100. So as you, you can see now, we have this very blocky and not so good looking file. The reason for this is because if we go to the render properties, as you can see we're an EV. Now if you were to use cycles, Cycles renders it to the best of its abilities, so it renders it to like its max. But if you're not using Cycles and you're using Eevee, you'll want to turn on Bloom, Ambient Occlusion, and then you'll want to go to Volumetrics and turn the tile size to 4, and turn the samples up so that it looks way more realistic, as you can see here, and kind of glows. But I'm using Cycles for now. Change this to GPU Compute, and I'm just going to change the max samples to 30 and... If you are not able to change this to GPU compute, that's fine. Some computers are not able to, so you can just keep it at CPU. I'm now going to create the ambos that come off of the file. So in order to do this, I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to bring in a isosphere, pull it up on Z, size it up on Z a bit, so that's pretty long, and then size it down so it's pretty small as well, something like that. I'm then going to go to materials, add a new one, and instead of the surface being principal BSDF, I'm going to change this to emission. I'm then going to change the color to kind of a dark red, and then change the strength to 21. So, 
as you can see though it's just kind of like an, a light uh, orange to like yellow because since it's so bright the color gets lined up and so instead of being red it's orange now I'm going to create a disc that kind of emits the ambos or embos by hitting shift a bringing in a circle I'm gonna pull this down so it's a little bit easier to see head into edit mode hit F to fill go back into this viewport shading pull this up until it's about in the middle middle of your sphere here size it down so it's about the same size so about that a little bigger I'm also gonna hide our sphere for now I'm then going to go to the particle properties and then add a new particle system I'm gonna keep it in middle but I'm gonna change the number to 90 Make the frame stop minus 50 so that at frame 0 you already have embos that are going up. Change the end to whatever end is of our timeline. So as you can see if you go to timeline here, it's 250. I'm then going to go to render. Change the render as to object and then go instance object and select our embo. As you can see if you go back into render mode you can see we have a bunch of these little tiny embos that are inside of our disk gear. This is really good. I'm then going to scale these down because they're quite big. So something like that might be good. And then I'm going to turn, turn up scale randomness so that they're all not the same size. Something like that. I'm then going to go here to physics and I'm going to turn up the brownian to 4. This way, instead of the embos just going straight up, they'll kind of go up and then kind of move around a bit. Like normal embos would do. I'm also then going to come down here and go to field weights. And as you can see, gravity is set to 1. This will cause all of our embos to fall down. But as you know, embos float up. And so we need to go to gravity and make it minus 0.1 so that they'll go up slowly. I'm then going to go to cache and then hit bake. Now that's baked, as you can see, we have these really nice small embos that are coming off of our file. And kind of moving around in different patterns so that they look a little more realistic. Another thing is, though, is you can see that the embos kind of get cut off. Like, they kind of all die down right about up here. But if you want to make that any better, if you want to make it last longer, you just turn up the lifetime. And then they'll go a bit higher. A couple things that I would like to show you and fix is that if you, you don't want to see this disc in rendered mode. So I'm just going to come down here and go to render and then just go show a minute and turn that off so you don't see it. And then if you actually render a frame by hitting F12 on our keyboard. As you can see, the file is, it doesn't glow at all and the embos don't either, which is very unrealistic. So to make the file look about 10 times better and to make it glow and be look very nice, we're just going to go into the comp compositing turn on use nodes pull over the render layers and in between we're gonna hit shift a and then we're gonna bring in a glare we're then gonna change this to fog glow and now if we render an image not only should the embos glow but the file should glow a bit red too so as you can see the file has this red glow and you can definitely tell on the embos that they're glowing a bit more red if you don't want it to be so red, you can always turn the ember color down and change the actual emission of them. But I think it looks okay for now. A couple things that are really good to know and that can help you um, with, let's say, like lighting a piece of wood on fire or doing that, is if you want to um, redo this on a different thing so let's say like a log or a torch or something like that you don't actually have to redo all of these settings all you have to do is hit shift a or let's say like this was your log or something you you select this one first then let's unhide our sphere then select the sphere after and if you actually go to the modifiers and you pull and you look at the fluid and you pull down this little arrow you can hit copy to select in and now this one will have all the exact same well, the exact same uh, settings. And so if we actually shrink this cube down and we put it inside of our domain here and then we were to select this domain and hit free all and then bake, you will see that not only does the sphere light on file, 
but the cube also will. So as you can see, not only does the sphere line fall, but if you play it, the cube does too now, and they both look very good. One more thing that I would like to show you is, as you can see, the smoke kind of hits the top of our domain here, and some people don't really want that because maybe they want it to be able to go more into the atmosphere or be able to kind of dissipate a little bit faster. So one way you can do this is you can turn down the dissolve. So you can turn down the time of the dissolve because as you can see here, it says determine how quickly the smoke dissolves. Lower value makes smoke disappear faster. So you can do that. But you can also always just size the actual domain up on Z a little bit. So I can do that and then hit bake all. And then if I just hit escape on my keyboard, as you can see now, the smoke, instead of hitting the top here, it just kind of goes into the atmosphere and you don't see it like bounce off of our box because that would look kind of weird. If you like the tutorial, it'd be very nice if you could like and subscribe. And if you would like to see more, you can hit that notification bell to be informed of any new videos. I uh, hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!